Should you consider working as a federal government employee? I sat down with a friend of mine to discuss what it's like to be a federal government employee in D.C. He works at FEMA. FEMA is headquartered in D.C., has about 20,000 employees, and he has worked there for 14 years as a training specialist. First, I asked him, how did you get your job? So his federal resume was between four and five pages. And if you want an idea on how to set up a good federal resume, I have a template down below you can download. Check out the first pinned comment. So he applied to about 15 to 20 different jobs, and he received four to five interview requests. And every job that he interviewed for, he actually got a job offer for. And this is kind of rare. Usually you'll see something more like a 50-50 split. It is uncommon for someone to get a job offer for every single interview. The job offer that he accepted was a GS9 with the promotion potential of GS11. Now there was only one interview for this and this was in person. Nowadays, most interviews are happening virtual. So the interview, he said it was not anything too difficult. They just wanted to know some of his general experience. And then I think about a week or two after the interview, he ended up with the job offer. I asked him what could help someone get hired at FEMA. And he said the same stuff with most government jobs. You have to have a strong resume, look on usajobs.gov, create a filter, start applying to those jobs. Also, visit the FEMA website and there's doctrine and there's current events in there. You can speak to them during the interview and that is what helps you stand out. And with the questions, it's important to have your answers structured in the STAR format, the situation, task, action, result. You want to craft your success stories in that type of format. It doesn't have to be exactly star. It just needs to be in a coherent format that allows you to deliver and communicate your value. All right, so then I asked him, what are the pros and cons of working in FEMA? One of the pros is working with the community. Even though he was a training specialist, there were five hurricanes that hit Florida. And he was able to go, I think it was in 2019, he was able to go down there and make a direct impact with the community. He said that felt really good that to know that he was contributing to something that was greater than himself. Same thing when Hurricane Sandy hit New York. He went door to door in Long Island, helping people, providing relief, providing assistance to the people that were suffering. Also your DHS training, your FEMA training. You'll be one of the first ones selected. There's limited seating. But as an employee of FEMA, that kind of puts you ahead. It puts you in priority for a lot of these type of classes. You can also meet a lot of good people that work inside of FEMA. It can help build and expand your network. So what about the cons? Well, FEMA falls under the Department of Homeland Security and every four years, you will have a new FEMA director and that could impact you. Even if you're not in management, if you're not in the leadership, it'll still impact your job and what your priorities and focus will be. One of the worst experiences he had was actually working with HR. They were trying to process his travel voucher, the money they were compensating him when he traveled to Florida, when he traveled to New York. And when he deployed, they forgot to process his orders. So it took 90 days to actually remove some of the debt they had on his account. Another thing is you're gonna be on the road a lot. Anybody who signs up for FEMA, when you're trying, when you're applying for the FEMA position, it lets you know that you could be on call at any time, especially when there's a national emergency. So if you value protecting your family time and you want that secure, work-life balance type situation, then FEMA might not be the agency for you. I asked him, what do you do on a typical day? And he said a lot of his day was revolving around interagency coordinations. There were like 60 different departments that he was coordinating with. He also developed and assisted developing different training exercises for that agency. I asked him, why did you choose the federal government route instead of the contractor route? Why did you pick government? And he said he was actually a contractor. He did three years as a contractor. In fact, he felt the money was better on the contracting side, but he was looking for stability. He was looking for security. He didn't want to have to worry about his contract running out. And that, along with benefits and the pension, that's what kind of guided him more towards the federal government side. Now, this guy doesn't have a military background, but he made the point that a lot of people in the military, when they do 20 years and they retire and they have that pension, they will go to the contracting side because they have stable revenue coming in every single month. So they can afford to be to take more of a risk approach with the contracts running out and jumping on a new contract. So he wanted me to mention that. I asked him if he would ever consider going back to the contracting side. And 
Right now, he's anticipating retiring from the federal government with a pension at 58 years old. After 58, he's thinking about going back into the contracting side. So what would cause you to get fired at FEMA? It depends. He had a position with a top secret clearance. If he were to lose that top secret clearance for whatever reason, he could be out of a job because he wouldn't meet the qualifications for that job any longer. If you do make it through those first 12 months of probation, you should be good for the most part. There are people that are fully vested in the government, meaning that they have three years of government service and they were getting in trouble with domestic abuse and even DUI and they kept their jobs. I asked him if he was changing jobs soon and he said he actually just moved to another agency but he didn't want me to disclose it. So then I said on a scale of one to 10, one being extremely dissatisfied and 10 means you love your job, what number rating would you give FEMA? And he told me he would give it six out of 10. He still has good relationships with the manager and some of the leadership over at FEMA. And he even asked me, hey, are you considering on jumping over to FEMA because I can put a good word in? I said, no, 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 <laughs> I'm not thinking about FEMA. I'm okay where I'm at right now. So that just goes to show you, it's really important to keep in contact with other agencies, other people, because you never know when those type of opportunities might help other people. Now, if you're open to both contracting jobs and government jobs, you might be curious to know why a lot of people gravitate more towards the federal government side. I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.